everyone, it's Micah. On this episode of The Sounding Board, I'll be talking about Beyonce and her foray into country music. But more to the point, I'll be talking about how people are reacting to her foray into country music. I'm first going to share something that I posted on Facebook a few days ago. Random pop stars cover Motown. Yay! Taylor Swift switches to pop. Yay! Linda Ronstadt tries every single genre. Yay! Dolly Parton releases a rock album. Yay! Beyonce records a country album. Let's have an in-depth discussion about the issues surrounding this fact pattern. And that's pretty much where I feel like we are with this conversation. Uh, instead of there being fanfare and interest and, uh, you know, just general goodwill towards a popular music artist branching out and experimenting with a new genre of music, what we have instead is this hand-wringing discussion about whether she should be doing something like this or not. And it, it really, on its face, seems like a, an absurd conversation to have. Why would a musician who was born in Texas not have the free will to record a country album? It doesn't seem to make a lot of sense, but um, it is happening. So on some level, it does have to make sense, I suppose. Um, and that's what I want to talk about. Like, what's going on here? What's really going on here that makes this such a point of contention. I think the first and most important thing to realize is that it wouldn't matter what Beyonce said. If Beyonce said, I'm going to do an album of Destiny's Child covers, then they would say, oh, she's running over Michelle and Kelly. If she said, I'm going to do a straight ahead pop album and work with um, Ryan Tedder for the entire album, people say, oh, well, she forgot her roots. If Beyonce said, I am going to do exactly what a poll conducted online said I should do based on everybody's rampant opinions about what I should do. Everyone would say, as everyone would say, oh, she's selling out. It wouldn't matter what Beyonce does. It wouldn't matter what she decided to do. There would be a significant contingent of people waiting there to shoot it down, regardless. So the fact that she's doing country music just causes people to aim and in that direction and shoot in that direction because that's the direction she went in and that's to some degree as far as it goes with it uh, and to be a little less victimizing on her part it's true of anyone in that degree of prominence uh, one thing that came to mind for me was when Barack Obama infamously wore a tan suit in an, as an official uh, in an official function I don't know if it was a press conference or an interview and the uh, conservatives lost their minds because apparently you are not a true American and not a functional responsible representative of the of the country in the highest office of the land if you aren't wearing a suit that's black blue or charcoal gray and apparently this was in very very important and it was completely uh, disrespectful to the to the office to wear a suit that was that light in color. How drastically our standards have reduced, or some people's standards have reduced, about what constitute proper constitutes proper presidential behavior. But um, I say that to say it's because when you're that much in the public eye, when you're that powerful, when your name holds this much importance and this much uh, and draws this much attention from people across the country, then your decisions are going to be looked at under a microscope. So whereas Kay Michelle, who is another black female singer who's gone into country, um, has received virtually no friction or backlash that I'm aware of for trying out country music. Beyonce, of course, runs into nothing, runs into almost like nothing but trouble. She's, you know, there's a fair amount of people who like that this is what she's done and think it's cool, uh, but she's run into some trouble for it. Some people have said that this is specifically a racial issue, and that's 
and that's what it's about. One station in particular is being charged with being uh, discriminatory for refusing to play her song. Um, however, that station said, you know, that station maintained that it was just a misunderstanding, that they didn't even realize that Beyonce had come out with a country record. They just thought it, they were just confused about why why they were someone was asking for Beyonce on the station. Uh, and that very well could be. But regardless, there are racial undertones and overtones to some of the, the statements that people are making. And it is very true that a white artist um, would, almost any given white artist, would, would face a lot less scrutiny for uh, trying to cross over into country than, than Beyonce would. Like if Justin Bieber tomorrow decided he was going to do a country album, people would laugh about it, but no one would be truly offended by it. So, um, in response, of course, country music fans are, are going to trot out the my best some of my best friends are black argument and point to people like Darius Rucker, who had successfully transitioned to country music uh, after um, after his success on the pop charts with Hootie and the Blowfish, and older legacy artists like Charlie Pride. There is not a distinct racial divide in country music there's you know black artists aren't going to be specifically prohibited but i do think the important distinction here is that beyonce didn't work within the nashville system to do this album and there is a, there is a very established system for how country music is supposed to work and you're going to ruffle feathers if you don't go through that and a lot of artists of all colors have uh, have encountered that um that stonewall but there's no real reason why everything would have to go through a, a checklist of approval if you make country music and people want to listen to it then that really should be the only thing um, but I think the bigger issue here not just what system she used or didn't use I think when you listen to the songs that Beyonce is singing you see that she's not checking her identity at the door she's not just she's not just quietly slipping into the the stylistic choices of generalized country music. She's adding her Beyonce flair to these songs. She, the production uh, is, is, is very similar to how she's approached, uh, how she's in, in the, the, the production and arrangement of the songs is very similar to how she's approached her, her most recent albums. Uh, she's, it's not that she's just throwing a fiddle and a in a in a banjo on top of, an, of 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 a regular Beyonce song and calling it a day, she is getting into the 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 thematic and instrumental distinctions of country music, and and I think she's doing it thoughtfully, uh, but she's not playing by the rules, so to speak, and. Uh, and because of that, it's caused a bit of a cultural rift. Now, uh, I did open the video with a couple of uh, widely disparate quotes. And John Schneider's comments about marking a tree like a dog, in other words, turning this into a territorial argument where liberals shouldn't be doing country music is basically the, the upshot here. Uh, as terrible as that type of mindset is, I think it really gets to the heart of what's going on and why this is such an issue for some people. Some people, uh, some country music fans, feel like country music is their music and they cherish it in the way that they cherish other things um, that they con to consider to be untouchably uh, pure and American. What they don't realize is that pure and American are oxymorons. There's so much impurity in America, and I mean that both in a completely neutral sense of things are all mixed up in America. We, we really are a melting pot in so many ways. Country music itself is a pastiche of different racial and cultural traditions. Um, and it's also not pure in the sense that it's blameless and that it's innocent. Um, the, probably the most obnoxious thing about Jason Aldean's song from last year, Try That in a Small Town, is this, is this idea that somehow people who live in the country 
have everything figured out and people who live in the city are just uh, hooligans that don't have any regard for uh, for civilization and when you th when you throw up battle lines like that and when you have so many of the people who listen to that type of music latch on to those types th those types of sentiments then you start introducing these elements of territorialness into or territoriality into uh into a genre of music and that's why i threw up that other quote from ella fitzgerald and it's you know she's not the only one that's ever said this it's it's almost common sense as far as I'm concerned that music is the universal language we you know and if we don't share music then it's almost like a tree falling in the forest if you're not sharing the music did you ever really make it we have to you know we if you're going to put music up on streaming platforms if you're going to go to a, 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 a an open mic night at a coffee house if you're going to do anything in the way of sharing your music with someone else then you're reaching out to the to a person that's unlike you and saying here is this thing and once you put that out there then it's out there you don't get to say oh only liberals can listen to my music only conservatives can listen to my music only white people can listen to my music you don't get to you don't get to regulate that once you put that music out there it's out there and people can take it in and in internalize it make it part of their lives to make it part of their traditions and they can and then if they they're musically inclined themselves they're gonna they're going to push it back out again in a slightly different form and that's how music progresses and that's how music works when you start interjecting this t territorialness into into music it it like it stops having its niche, its original meaning it just becomes a propaganda tool and ultimately people like John Schneider and the network that he appeared on and the people who support him and Jason Aldean and Donald Trump, ultimately, they don't care about any of these cultural institutions. They just care about getting their way. And that's what it's about. Beyonce represents them not getting their way because if they had their preference, they wouldn't want this left-leaning black R&B pop performer on their radio stations that they like to listen to even if she is doing music that in the back of their mind they do understand is really just as valid a valid interpretation of country music and certainly more so than some of this bro country and these other things that that show up on country radio nowadays even though they may grumble about that at least it's you know at least it's our people doing it and you can take our people in any way you want you, you care to but you just throw all regard for music itself out the window when you start talking about it in this way. Uh, John Schneider himself was born in New York and just played someone from the South for what five years on a on a on a cheesy TV show and then started making country music records. I would say Beyonce has more birthright to country music than John Schneider does. Um, if we're going to get territorial about it but i don't begrudge john schneider i was born in tennessee i never begrudged john schneider coming down from new york and playing a duke of hazard and and then having a country music career it never bothered me that he decided to capitalize off of that and make a make a music career off of it but now he wants to turn around and claim something for him based on what i mean if it's not his race then it's kind of difficult to see where it is that he would lay claim to this over Beyonce. And this is the sort of ugly type of discussion. And I realize the discussion I'm having about this is ugly because when you start digging beneath the surface and you start thinking about what belongs to who, then you realize that you've, number one, undermined the entire purpose of sharing music. And number two, you realize that the answers become a lot less clear cut than you might think upon first glance. Um, so to me, I think we should just not get that far into the discussion. We should just accept the fact that people are free to perform the music they want to. People are free to consume the music they want to. If the country music stations ultimately decide that they 
that Beyonce's music is not a good fit for their format, then, and that's and, and totally and do that totally based on the merits and not because of certain constituents who don't want her on there for their own personal comfort, their own personal social comfort, uh, then, you know that's that's fine. How we determine how we determine how they made those decisions is an entirely different conversation. Uh, but you know we'll see how this works out. I I. I will tentatively predict, and hopefully I, this won't age poorly, but I'm going to tentatively predict that Beyonce will have modest success on the country charts after people get used to the idea of her doing it and they realize that she's not inst she's not instigating a liberal takeover of a genre of music, then it'll calm back down a little bit and she can just take her place as a mid-level country artist, uh, even if it's only for this one album cycle. And then everything will will stabilize again but these kind of risks these kind of convert these kind of difficult conversations and in awkward interviews that take place uh that that get splashed across the headlines they do uh bespeak of a, a rumbling that's underneath the surface and i if we you know i think we we can't totally ignore it uh hopefully it's a blip on the radar but we really need to examine our you know our own thoughts about ownership of music and uh when especially when you see something this ugly coming out from uh from someone who claims to be a musician uh it, it really makes you think about like what are our assumptions about who owns music so those are my thoughts uh let me know in the comments if you agree or disagree um i reserve the right to take down comments that go to fear too far into one direction or the other because it, even though i made the video and i said what i said uh i don't necessarily need for the comments to go off into into various non-productive direction Thank you for tuning in to this edition of The Sounding Board, and we'll be back next week with another new topic. Please remember to like this video if you liked it. Please remember to subscribe to the channel if you feel so inclined, and please help me to make music better.